Hello everyone. Welcome to the second video on lecture three. So this video really covers the implementation set of things in terms of calculating risk and return. So let's dive in. Firstly, we import the packages and then uh, we look at the graph we looked at earlier, which is uh, two time series, right? And uh, these are manually constructed. Python, uh, okay, so this live in the list. So I have one list, I have a two list. And I specifically construct it so that they have the same mean. So we use the mp.mean to calculate the mean and they are the same. Um, so so this, uh, we can also uh, compare if they are the same using the equality, uh, equality uh, operator here. So if they are the same, then we return true, right? So these are uh, the uh, two, uh, time series and uh, we stay same mean here. But obviously you see that SI2 is more volatile in terms of the percentage return. Um, it's good to combine all these series in, uh, in data frame. So that's why I'm using uh, Pandas data frame to build this data frame here. And the, the, uh, the way is really, uh, I'm first constructing the dictionary. So this is dictionary, right? Uh, how do I know that? Because this is a key and this is a value. So dictionary consists of a series of key value pairs. So this is a pair and uh, this is another pair and they are separated by the comma E, right? So I'm just converting uh, some information from the dictionary uh, into a data frame, to, uh, which is easier, easier to work with. All right, so that can use the plot function of the data frame and uh, I can choose to say plot is a bar plot. So this is how I uh, produced the graph you saw in the slides. I can also calculate the sand deviation or right, just by calling the uh, STD function here. And uh, you see that SI2 is obviously more volatile because of the higher standard deviation. Uh, although they are means the same, right? So you can also call the main function instead of using NumPy. Again, uh, multiple ways to calculate the same quantity. Um, now, this is what we call a one plus R format. So we just plus one to get the uh, one plus R format the returns for all the periods, right? Now, assuming that we have 100 sour initial investment, and let's see how this 100 evolves over time. Um, to calculate this, we call the, the uh, the comprot. So this function, what it really does is to calculate the cumulative products uh, for the, for each period, right? So for uh, for the first period, you just multiply by and uh, the first uh, percentage return in M plus in one plus R format, right? The second period. So this is uh, one point zero five multiply one point three to get the uh, one three six. Right? And then similarly, it multiply three terms to get this uh, single period single period return. And this is because multiply this, this, and this. So this is a cumulative process. And uh, we need to buy, multiply all the previous uh, returns until the current time point, right? So this is what uh, com product does. And this is to scale it in terms of how much money we have uh, as an initial investment. <clears throat> Okay, so now we have the uh, the uh, wealth process. So, so this gives us a wealth process in terms of uh, at each period, how much money we have in our pockets, right? And this is, uh, again, the graph we saw in the slides. Uh, SI2 ends up with a lower return, right? Low, lower terminal return than SI1. So this is a, um, a hypothetical case, but uh, it illustrates the importance of uh, of risk, uh, even their returns are same. Okay, so now let's look at how to convert from prices to returns because we usually start from the asset prices. Uh, so this is a uh, price, and so we can calculate the first period return by uh, taking the percentage, uh, uh, taking the division of the these two prices, and then adjust by one. So this gives us the one plus our return and uh, we minus one to get the original return for the first period. And same from the second period, 
right? So one plus R and then minus one to get R. Now we can calculate the sequence of returns using the, uh, the uh, NumPy approach. Now this really, instead of calculate, uh, calculating the a single period returns one by one, uh, let's see how to calculate that mean one shot. So we take the, the last two uh, prices, first two prices, and then uh, take the division, right? So this gives us uh, all the returns uh, in one shot, which is the uh, same as before. But now this is uh, faster, right? We do it in one shot. Um, that's also uh, uh, pandas would do this. So again, we convert it to a data frame, right? So this is our data frame. Um, we can, uh, so we can use the alloc function to locate. So I mean, it's the index. We're locating by the index uh, of the last two prices, the first two prices. Um, and then we just take the division. Um, the, the, the issue here is that you see uh, it's not uh, giving us the same results as before. Uh, it's because the, of the index here. So this index zero one, and this index one two. So it's uh, misaligned, right? Um, how do we go about this? We want to ignore the index. So that's why we say, I'm still using the same values, but uh, I just want to take the values, the contents uh, in the data frame. Yeah and ignore the, the index. <coughs> so so what ha this happens is that uh, this is just taking the values of the two data frames, calculate, and then uh, uh, get us the one plus R, then we just uh, minus one to get the R from its return. So that's another way to calculate it. Um, you can extract either the the values of the nominator, numerator, or denominator. So this is the uh, same thing. Um, the other part is just automatically converted uh, to the values. Okay, so that's one more way, which is to use the shift function. Shift means that we are moving it. In this case, we're moving downwards by one unit, right? So this is uh, moving downwards and then and we just uh, take the division because uh, it's still aligned, right? Still on the zero, one, two, so it's still aligned. Then that's why we can do this. <laughs> um, okay, so we have one more approach, which is just a percentage change. So this is another what to use function. And uh, this is uh, convenient because just in one shot, it does a return uh, in percentage terms for each consecutive periods. Right? So it's the same results. Um, we want to calculate the, the terminal return. Again, it involves a compounding process. So, so the process is really uh, first get a one plus R format return, which is to add one um, based on the previous uh, returns to that frame, right? So we have the one plus R format return. And then we take the uh, cumulative products for the compounded return, right? So this is to take the products, then uh, convert from one plus R to R from it. Now, uh, so this is a NumPy way. Uh, a pandas way is to, uh, is to uh, call the product function prod, which is to take the product of all the elements uh, in, the, uh, in the data frame in a column wise fashion. And then again, minus one. Okay. So now let's look at analyzation for returns on this. So returns, if it's steady, and we assume usually there are two, five to 20 days, uh, what we do is uh, again, follow the sequential process of compounding. So this compounding each individual period's return in the one plus R format fashion, right? This one plus R, we do this for uh, this many days. That's why we compound it by raising it to the power of two, five, two. And then, uh, so this is a typo here, so you need to mind this up. Um, okay, so, so to get the, 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 the real return. So let me, I think, uh, to run it. Otherwise, the results in the following may not be correct. Okay. Um, so now it's uh, corrected. Okay. So month return, um, here we have 12 months with a power of 12. And then the cost return, 
this now changes to four, right? So um, this uh, this is same as if we were to uh, to look at so analyzing the risk. So this is to analyze the uh, the risk, uh, i.e. Uh, volatility or standard deviation, right? because uh, now this is uh, for the daily uh, volatility. So this is daily volatility and um, reason to, to the, uh, okay, so this is not written to the power. For the, the risk, we need to multiply. So this is multiply and uh, uh, the square root of 252 because uh, we are living the this is standard deviation uh, unit, not the, the, the virus, right? Okay, so this is uh, analyzation for the return and the risk. Uh, next, we'll get the sharp ratio. So we have a simple case here. So we have two assets. First asset, this is our return and the volatility. Second asset, and this is our risk-free rate. Okay. So if we look at the, uh, the risk, uh, the return over risk as we show, then uh, we see that uh, SLY is performing better than SL2, right? Uh, this is 0 0.25, 0 0.2. However, uh, interestingly, if we adjust for the fact that we have a baseline or benchmark risk free rate, then we uh, factor that in. Now, SL2 is better, right? So this is again, we may end up with different results, uh, not necessarily the order uh, or, 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 or the way uh, better, but it may end up with better results uh, if we uh, adjust for the, the baseline rate. All right, so next uh, let's uh, work with some real data. So here I'm downloading the app on the Google uh, stock prices uh, since uh, the first the first day of uh, 2023. Right, so you see, say, yeah, this is the data we have. And uh, it's actually having a multi-layer column here. So first layer column uh, is the price indicator. Second layer is the, the sticker indicator. Right? And uh, we focus on the adjusted closing price for the two companies. So this is uh, how we extract based on the column. And then uh, this is what the data frame looks like. Um, we can use the percentage return to calculate the returns uh, in terms of one plus R formats. Right? So this is uh, uh, this is one plus R, and uh, <clears throat> I'm joking on this because uh, some days the data may not be uh, in good format. All right, so we can calculate the mean return, which is uh, we're just using the mean function and uh, take the standard deviation, which is uh, to say, I'm taking the column wise standard deviation. Um, okay, so this is true that uh, if we specify the wrong uh, axis, then we will get uh, not the intended result results, right? So this is column wise, uh, this is row wise, which is uh, not very wrong. So let's calculate the volatility uh, in the manual fashion. So we just uh, use the row data frame uh, minus the, the mean. Um, we have the deviations here, so these are deviations. Step two is to take this square, right? So just this right. <clears throat> this is how we uh, raise to the power of two. And then we take the average of these uh, square uh, deviations here. So we can calculate the, uh, the uh, standard deviation here. Um, okay, so this is virus, and then we we'll calculate this standard deviation or so called volatility uh, by taking the square root. Right? So, this is really to show you that we can follow the minor process to calculate the volatility. Um, the adjustments, uh, okay, so there's an issue here because this result is not really the same as uh, we, were, we were to calculate for the population uh, volatility. Right? So, that's why we should. Divided by m plus uh, m minus one to to make the adjustments, right? So how to get n? Uh, we just use the shape to get the number of rows in the data frame. <coughs> All 
Okay, so now this is the same as before now. Um, analyze the volatility is the same. Uh, we just get a standard deviation first. So this is column wise a standard deviation, right? It's just an easier approach just to call the STD function. And then uh, multiply by square root of 252. So this is daily. Now we're leaving the annual basis. Um, another way to calculate the uh, square root is, uh, is like this. Right? So raise it to the power of 0 0.5, which is the same thing. Um, returns, uh, now, when it comes to analyzing the returns, we need to view this as a, as a sequential process, right? Sequential means that um, one plus a format, we take the cumulative products, right? So cumulative, and then, uh, so this is our, uh, this is our so-called terminal return, right? And they want to get the daily return, which is, <clears throat> And that's why we uh, raise it to the power of one over uh, n here. So n means the whole number of trading days. So this gives us our daily return in one plus of format. Then we minus one to get the get the uh, original uh, percentage return per day, right? And then uh, we just raise it to the two five power of two five two to convert from daily return to analyzed return. So this is uh, bringing to the, to the annual scale. Right, converting to the end of scale. Okay, so that's another shorthand approach, which is uh, like this. So really, the key change here is that now this is our this is our adjustment factor. Right? So if we so uh, so yeah, so we just combine these two in one shot. <clears throat> um. Lastly, we can encode the risk reads and uh, manage it off from analyzed return, right? And then uh, this is also called access return. We divide it by the analyzed volatility to compile this to stocks and see that uh, Apple is actually doing quite well and Google is not so well at the beginning of the year, right? So that's it and uh, thanks for watching.